I never made a state team. Being an underdog led me to where I'm at now. I really think it happened for a reason because I think it really just fueled me to like work harder and work harder than everyone else. I'm Will Johnson, I'm 20 years old and I play for UTRGV. I started playing like at about nine years old and that was just for fun, you know. I originally played rugby and that was my first love. And um, in the off season one time, I was just like, oh, why don't you give basketball a try? And so from then on, I played it for about five more years and it was really just for fun until then. And then when I was 14, I, I just really fell in love with the game. I first started taking it seriously when I went to Kings. Yeah, they just wanna see me in the grave. Come out the lot in the rave. In year 12, I averaged 30 a game. I actually didn't even make the, the conference team. They have like the conference teams. And I mean, I led the league in scoring, which is kind of funny, but it is what it is though. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of just how it's been throughout my whole career. So I ended up playing division two reps. That was my first time ever playing in like the rep world. And then eventually I got the opportunity to go to prep school. So somehow, some way they saw my tape from high school and they, um, they reached out and like I got the opportunity to be um, play under Coach B at Perkyoma. Looking like his father and his uncle of days gone by. 10 on the shot clock. Johnston into the lane. Gets it to fall. Johnston of Sydney. I'd say I definitely struggled at the start when it came to prep school. And I think I really developed a lot that year. It was definitely a learning curve. I feel like I wasn't quite ready yet for American basketball, but I definitely wouldn't be playing the level that I'm at if it wasn't for Perky Omen. I got so much stronger, developed my game crazy. I still had no idea where I was going to play at yet for college. I was actually, the only schools that I had, I was considering going to Division 3. How did I meet Will? It's a very interesting question. Um, I think I coached against him first off. That would be my first interaction with him. He went to King's School, obviously, and I was coaching at Grammar. So there was a guy tearing up the GPS and we had to scout for, um, and it happened to be Will Johnson. So that was my first kind of interaction with him. And then I saw him a few times at KGV, playing some pickup ball. I knew he was tight with Wiley, so I kind of met him through there. And then he started working with me officially, I'd say probably just before he went to prep school or maybe when he was at prep school and he was coming back. Um, kind of that year before Juco is when I first started working with him and I was pretty impressed with his work ethic and his talent. And then, you know, just just kind of became a natural thing for him to, to get in the gym with me. We have a good relationship and I think we both kind of know, know how to go about kind of achieving the goals that he wants to achieve, so. He's a pro. He's gonna be a pro without a doubt in my mind. The majority of everything in achieving goals and getting to the next level is, is psychological and mental. And, and a lot of it's luck, right place, right time. And you know you need a lot of things to go your way and often those things don't go your way. How do you respond to those things? And the more I got to know Will, the more I realized that's where he was, he was built different. That's where I think he's probably one of the best kind of athletes I've worked with in that area. He's, he's resilient, he's tough, he's motivated. He has unbelievable discipline, unbelievable work ethic. And it's not just me saying it, I don't say that about many people, but, but he was, you know, just to, to put it in perspective, he got off this off season when we started, he got off a plane from LA, LA to Sydney, I think it was. 6 a.m. he touches down, Sydney, 10 a.m. he's in the gym with me, 12 p.m. he's doing another shoot around with me, then he's getting in the weight room, 
three three workouts in a day that he lands. Like you know, it's just he's just wired that way and it ticks over for him like that. So I mean, that's where I think I noticed the biggest difference, and that's where we've kind of built out our, our relationship on. What I think separates him the most is his no conscience. He is just unafraid and he backs himself and his confidence level in moments where it's very easy to shrink and not be confident is, is crazy. <laughs> I think borderline hurts him at times because he just takes any shot available to him and he believes it's going to go in. So, you know, coaches might not look favorably on that, but I think he's learning how to rein that in and pick his moments. And he goes and hunts for the ball at times when he knows he needs to go and get it. And his ability and his confidence and self-belief in that area is, is what I think is most impressive about him. I finally got South Georgia Tech offered me a full scholarship. So now I was like, okay, it's my only full scholarship, I'm gonna go there. And from the jump, really, like, I was, I was glad I made that decision, you know? I came in and, and from Perkyoma, I knew what to expect. I was ready to go. And, and from freshman year, like we played against some like high major guys. And just the fact that like I competed against those guys and had games where like I had like, I had in my third game, I think I, I had 30 against high major guys going to like those schools. And it just gave me confidence, you know, it doesn't matter that I didn't play state, it doesn't matter that I didn't play reps or, or none of that growing up. I was just like, oh yeah, like I could really do something with this. So throughout that year, I had a successful year. I'd say we lost in the semifinals of our conference tournament. And I, I'd say it was a successful year. I played pretty well, you know. I was freshman of the year that year and made tournament team. Coming into this year, you know, I just, I just knew I had to build upon it. And that was, that was the main experience from that. The main goal was to win a chip, you know. We, we lost in the semifinals the first year. And it was just like, okay, everything is about, let's go, let's go win this chip now. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, my Jordan, give me the rock and I'm scoring. Hey, came from the bottom, that's foreign. I swear that I'm up for the sun in the morning. Oof, hey, I got a flex. I need a Nike bag, give me the check. I need the money and power, respect, but I promise I'm repping the O to the dead. Hey, oof, I told him out of my way. I don't got nothing to say. Now they can't run on my pace. Yeah, they know that we ain't the same. 402, we rap the game. I had a really good year, I think, you know, start off strong. We, we had our ups and downs and there was a lot of stuff that went on, but, you know, I, I'm really proud of our guys there. You know, we did a great job and, and we won that chip that year. So then after we won the chip, we got an opportunity to go to national tournament. And, um, you know, that was an experience. You know, we ended up losing the first game, but, was, you know, but to be honest with the guys, like, we had in the school we had, we hadn't been there in, like, eight years or something like that. Like, we never really meant to even be there in the first place. And the fact that we came out there and, like, competed, like, I was proud of the guys and that. Before even the, we won our conference championship, I had schools talking to me. UTRGV was the first school to offer me. And the reason why I committed there was because they were the first school to just go all in on me, you know, not because of what someone else said, not because they, they came in and just offered me straight away. And it was just, and they trusted me from day one. So that's, that's the main reason why I wanted to go there. And, you know, just visiting campus, talking to coaches, you know, I thought it would be a great opportunity. And, you know, I'm really excited for the future. He made it as an American. He's had to grind and, and everything that's happened, he's done as an American, as a 6'1 as a white American point guard. In terms of upside, I've spoken to Will about this and we aim for the stars. We, we talk about it all the time and we, we don't sit there and say that this is how we're going to get there. But his aim, and we've talked about it, is to try and get to the league. He wants to do everything possible to do that and people might think it's crazy to say that. But I think three years ago if he said he was a D1 college athlete, people would say the same thing and, and he's proven that wrong. So I think the sky's the limit for him given his potential and given everything that he comes to the table with. It's just a matter of making sure he, he does the work, as I trust he will do, and then the right set of eyes kind of catch him and, and, and believe in him. So sky's the limit for someone like Will and I'm excited to be a part of it. I feel like I just got to keep doing what I'm doing, you know. Um, the way I play, you know, my style of play, I feel like it's really going to translate well from, from JUCO to Division One. And um, if I keep doing what I'm doing, and uh, I feel like I can, I can be successful and then help our team get success. So that's the main thing. Man, beyond college, you've been passing a lot of 
a long time. A long time? Yeah. Oh, about the league, you know? That's every, everyone wants to go to the league, so that's definitely the main goal.